Hello YouTube, it's Supernova, back with more Falcon 4 PMS. Today we're looking at air-to-air -air combat using the fire control radar, range wall search mode and the AIM-120 AMRAM active transmit receive radar guided missile. The AN-APG-68 is a pulse Doppler airborne radar operating in the I J band and is housed in a radome at the nose of the F-16. Within the aircraft systems it is referred to as the Fire Control Radar or FCR. Verify that Master Arm is set to Arm. Set Master Mode to Air to Air by pressing the A-A button on the ICP or by pressing F6. Verify that the FCR is operating by checking that the radio frequency or RF switch on the miscellaneous panel is set to normal. To control electromagnetic emissions from the aircraft, the FCR can be set to standby, which stops the radar emitting. Selecting quiet with the RF switch puts the radar into standby mode. You can also put the radar into standby mode by pressing OSB4 on the multifunction display FCR page. We're looking at the FCR page on the left multifunction display, or MFD. The horizontal line across the display is the attitude indicator. This can be used to determine roll relative to the horizon. Verify that RWS is selected at OSB2. Range while search, or RWS, is the primary beyond visual range, or BVR, radar mode. It is designed to return as many contacts as possible in a short period of time, and is the most basic of the search radars in terms of information returned. As the primary BVR mode, RWS is used to find targets and aim the AIM-120 AMRAM and AIM-7 Sparrow missiles. RWS uses a B-scope display to present radar contacts. Think of the radar as a projector, which is projecting an angular beam from its lens outwards, both horizontally and vertically. A B-scope display spreads the base of the beam along the bottom of the display. The B-scope picture represents a limited overhead view of the volume of airspace that the radar sweep pattern covers. RWS has several search options, range, azimuth sweep, bar scan and radar elevation tilt. Range can be set to 10, 20, 40, 80 or 160 miles. Most targets will not be detected until they are well inside 40 nautical miles. Detection range is dependent on the target aircraft's radar cross-section. The horizontal green lines on the right of the display are range scales and indicate one quarter, one half and three quarters of the currently selected range. You may adjust range using OSB19 and OSB20 or by moving the target acquisition cursor to the top or bottom of the display. Verify that range is set to 40 miles. Azimuth sweep can be set to 10, 30 or 60 degrees and is indicated by the scale at the bottom of the radar screen. The scale is split into 20 degree marks with zero at the centre and it represents the full 120 degrees that the radar can scan. The two vertical cyan lines that appear on the radar screen when operating in restricted azimuth scan patterns are the azimuth gates. When operating in a restricted azimuth scan pattern, the azimuth sweep can be slewed left and right by moving the target acquisition cursor to the left and right edges of the current azimuth sweep area. Note that targets outside the azimuth sweep will not be detected, unless the target is locked, in which case the FCR will break the azimuth gates periodically to update the target track. Targets close to the locked target may then also be detected. You may adjust the azimuth sweep to 10, 30 or 60 degrees with OSB 18 or by moving the target acquisition cursor to the left or right of the display. The beam the antenna emits can scan 4.9 degrees in the vertical. When the radar bar scan pattern is set to 1 it will scan only this area. When the radar bar scan pattern is set to 2 or 4 the antenna tilt angle will be adjusted to scan a greater area. It takes 2.5 seconds to scan one bar and half a second to move the antenna to the next bar. A full 4 bar scan will therefore take 12 seconds to complete. In general, a 2 bar scan pattern should be used when the position of enemy aircraft is known, otherwise a 4 bar scan pattern should be used. To set radar bar scan to 2, press OSB 17.
You can also tilt the elevation of the entire radar bar scan pattern with the antenna elevation control on the throttle. Tilt the antenna down with control F5, tilt it up with control F7, and center the antenna with control F6. Elevation information is represented by the scale on the left of the radar screen. There are seven ticks in total, with a vertical line indicating the current elevation setting. The antenna is centered at the center tick, with each further tick indicating tilt angle in 20 degree increments up or down. The advantage of searching a smaller area is that the search is completed more quickly. The disadvantage is that contacts outside the search area will not be detected. The target acquisition cursor is made up of two small white vertical lines which can be slewed in the B-scope display and are used to lock onto targets. Moving the cursor over a target will also display its altitude without having to lock onto it. The two numbers to the right of the target acquisition cursor are the minimum and maximum altitudes of the bar scan at that range. The numbers change as the target acquisition cursor is moved away from your aircraft because of the angular nature of the beam. The volume of airspace searched is narrower closer to the aircraft and wider further from it. The number below the contact is its altitude in thousands of feet. Targets appear on the display as small squares which fade with each radar sweep. Each time the radar beam passes over a target, a new square is generated. This creates what are known as target histories, as targets move across the display. When you designate a target, the RWS display will change to Situation Awareness Mode, or RWS SAM. RWS SAM mode is similar to RWS, but because SAM mode has to track a designated target, it can't search the same volume of airspace. The azimuth gates will show the reduced radar azimuth coverage. Note that using RWS SAM mode increases the chance the target will detect you via a radar warning receiver. If you designate the target again while in RWS SAM mode, the mode will change to single target track or STT mode. STT will only track the designated target but will update continuously, providing the most accurate lock. When using STT, the target will probably become aware of the target lock, but the lock will be stronger and more difficult to break. To designate a target, move the target acquisition cursor over a target using the target acquisition cursor keys, which are the shift arrow keys by default, and then press target management switch or TMS up, which is shift home by default. The contact now has a yellow square around it, indicating that it is a system track file. It has a velocity vector pointing from the nose of the aircraft to indicate its flight direction. You may cancel the target designation with TMS down, which is shift end by default. The AIM-120 AMRAM is a beyond visual range air-to-air -air missile capable of all weather, day and night operations and is a successor to the AIM-7 Sparrow missile series. It was first deployed in September 1991. When fired at long range, it uses two-stage guidance. The firing aircraft continues to track the target, transmitting periodic updates to the missile in flight, allowing the missile to adjust its course by actuation of the rear fins. The AIM-120 has two active states, High Pulse Repetition Frequency, or HPRF, and medium pulse repetition frequency, or MPRF. The missile will become HPRF active first. At this point it will use the best tracking solution available, provided either by the launching aircraft, if it continues to track the target, or its own active radar seeker. The aircraft can break track when the missile is HPRF active, or it can continue to track the target until the missile is MPRF active, at which point it becomes self-homing. Termination criteria describes the kinetic energy and potential for manoeuvre the missile has at target intercept. Termination criteria can be high or nominal. Nominal termination criteria indicates the missile has less energy and manoeuvre potential at intercept, resulting in reduced probability of hitting the target. You may break target lock when the missile has become HPRF active, but it may be preferable to wait until it has become MPRF active unless the target is at a high aspect angle, in which case HPRF is sufficient. 
If target lock is lost or broken before HPRF, the missile will lock the first contact that it detects when it becomes HPRF active. Verify that AIM120 AMRAM is selected at OSB6. Note that SLAV or slave mode is selected at OSB18. Boresight mode is also available. In this mode the missile will lock onto the first target it detects after launch. For this tutorial we will use slave mode. You may select the radar cross section to match the target using OSB17. Options are small, medium, large or unknown. We will use medium radar cross section. A target designation or TD box appears on the head up display or HUD indicating the position of the designated target. To the right of the HUD is the Dynamic Launch Zone or DLZ. The DLZ has five range markers. From top to bottom these are Range Aerodynamic This is the maximum kinematic range of the missile assuming the target doesn't manoeuvre and the optimal lofting and azimuth are used. At this range the missile will have nominal termination criteria. Range Optimal this range has the same characteristics as range aerodynamic, but with high termination criteria. Range probability of intercept, or RPI. This is the same as range optimal, but does not require lofting or azimuth changes. Range turn and run, or RTR. This represents maximum range, assuming the target will turn away to tail aspect at missile launch. Range minimum. This is the minimum firing range. The target range queue will descend to the left of the DLZ as range to target decreases. To the left of the target range queue is the closure speed. When the target is within 125% of range aerodynamic, the required loft angle is displayed above it. When the target is within range optimal, m pole appears below the target range queue. m pole is the range from your aircraft in nautical miles to the target when the missile will become MPRF active. When the target is within RPI and RTR, the Digital Maneuvering Queue, or DMC, appears on the DLZ. This is the heading change the target would have to make to degrade the AMRAM from high termination criteria to nominal termination criteria. If the Mission Modular Computer, or MMC, or the Fire Control Computer, or FCC, determines that the missile will not hit the target, the time until termination will be displayed below the DLZ, with the letter L to the right of the countdown. Loose TOI, or Target of Interest, will also appear in the centre of the hood. To fire an AIM-120 AMRAM missile at the designated target, press and hold the Weapon Release button. Once the missile has been fired, the predicted A-pole, M-pole or F-pole will appear below the DLZ. A-pole is the range from your aircraft to the target when the missile becomes HPRF active. F-pole is the range from your aircraft to target missile impact. Time to HPRF active, time to MPRF active and time to impact will appear below the DLZ. Times are preceded by an A for A-pole, M for M-pole and T for time to impact. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the FCR, RWS and the AIM-120 missile. Feel free to like, comment and subscribe as it really helps the channel out and I hope to see you again for the next Falcon 4 BMS video.